Hey fellow explorers, I'm in one of my favorite cities in the entire world, Singapore. I'm spending five days here and in this video, I'm gonna take you around on all of the great things I see, do, and eat. All right, let's go. All right, well hey, good morning. It's 7.30 a.m. Singapore time. I've been up since about six. I couldn't sleep anymore. Breakfast doesn't start till 7.30, so I did some video editing of my United Premium Plus review to get out here. Look forward to that soon. Now I'm gonna go down and get some breakfast in the lounge, which is amazing. I mean, this is one of like the best Marriott lounge breakfasts. I Breakfasts, is that even a word? Marriott breakfast that I've ever had. And uh, today, since I'm up early, I'm gonna head off to the Singapore Zoo. I'll see you there. So to get to the zoo, I opted for a taxi instead of the haze of MRT to shuttle bus. The taxi was about 30 minutes with a really chatty taxi driver and cost me 25 Singaporean dollars. Uh, spent a couple hours wandering around the zoo, seeing lions, tigers, and bears. Oh my, actually no bears. The bear was, was sleepy, but they do have a bear here. It's the Malay bear. It's the smallest bear in the world, but uh, the Singapore Zoo, my favorite zoo anywhere. I love the open attractions. I love to hang out with the monkeys and the bats and see the butter flies and now I'm at lunch I'm at the Ah uh, Ming restaurant this restaurant is named after the most famous orangutan that they have here uh, this zoo is home to the world's largest colony of captive orangutans and they're actually like free roaming around the zoo you can see the staff members sometimes have to like bring them back to their living area here I got the tandoori chicken set let's go ahead and dive into this oh and you know but this whole like thing about not providing napkins or Kleenex. I mean, even here at the zoo, if you want to wipe your hands, you better have brought some tissue with you or pay $2 at the cashier to have something to wipe your hands and mouth in. I'm glad I brought some from the hotel. Mm, chicken flavorful though. The biryani here has like raisins in it. Pretty good. Um, I don't know that I'd call this a naan because it's so small, but we'll go ahead and dip that right here in the little curry. Mm, pretty good too. I mean overall for zoo food I really I really can't complain. And if I did it wouldn't do me any good anyway. After four hours in the Singapore Zoo, it's time to go check out the next River Wonder Park. But before that, I stopped in the food court uh, between the two right outside the main gate to get some more icy dessert. This is the Bo Bo Cha Cha Shave Ice Condensed Milk with Sweet Potato, with Taro, and with Jelly. Oh wow, the sun just came out, it got really bright. Mm. It's good, refreshing, so it's melting quickly because it's so hot. So before heading into River Wonders, I noticed there was a Starbucks and I came in here and noticed they had these super cute Starbucks bear merlions. I mean, this is a uh, like awesome Starbucks. You have like a cool merchandising team that you dress your bear up as the Singapore's mascot. He's not a panda, so I don't know that he's coming home with me. I think there's a panda at the Singapore uh, River Park gift shop that's coming home, but he's always got a place in my heart, I think. You know, it's funny, I often find that US brands are often better outside of the US than they are in the US. Starbucks is no exception. Their dessert counter here, they've got red velvet cake, carrot cake, lychee cake, pink rose velvet cake, yuzu cheesecake, strawberry shortcake. I mean, why can't we have this in the US? So now you're probably thinking, what is a river park? Well, this is Asia's first zoo that is basically focused on animals that live in or around rivers. And I would say this feels like an aquarium crossed with SeaWorld, crossed with a zoo. It doesn't feel as natural as the actual zoo zoo does. And the admission is less because I think this park isn't as dandy. Frankly, after walking through the whole thing, it's not. But um, you see a lot of like aquariums like this that you can see from inside and the top. That 
right down there, there's a tunnel that you go in and you can see the crave around it. It's pretty neat. There's like a sea otter going over there. There is one show in here and there's one ride. To do the ride, Amazon River Wonders, it's like an old ride like the Pirates of the Caribbean at Disneyland, except it's outside and you see animals and you have to pay an extra $5 tried the boat ride which I'm just out for insulting than anything but my guess is it was probably free when they opened this and they come to me for riding it and they had to control capacity and so there's five dollar fee like they don't sell tickets there you have to use your cell phone behind online which is just another one of those annoying things would I come to the river park again I don't think so I mean I would go to the zoo again because the zoo is pretty neat but I think one drift to this river park is enough the reason I think he would come to this river park is that it is rainy. If it's a rainy day and they can't go to the zoo because there's not enough cover, uh, you can come here because like the entire walk is under cover, which also made it a little bit cooler, which was nice. And I was sad. I didn't get to see the pandas. It was a panda habitat and we were all sleeping. But I will still take a made in Singapore stuffed panda home with me at the gift shop. After I walk through a second time, see, I do one walk to just experience it, and now I'm gonna go around again to make a walking tour video uh, that you can all watch later for once that's us out. Pretty sure my feet are going to be unhappy with me later today. I can feel the blisters starting to form in there. All right. So I think I ended up planning quite well. The thunder and lightning here at 4.30, the rain is coming down. Eventually, luckily I'm here undercover at the river park. Thank you, Singaporean government weather forecast for letting me know the afternoon is gonna be rainy. Also, the taxi driver on the way here told me that's how it is in Singapore. If you wanna do something outside, do it in the morning because in the afternoon, often thunder showers. Just on cue. Well, and my best plan of showing you the show was canceled because of the rain. Uh, but instead, because of the rain, they were just bringing some animals out to show them to us. Anyway, if you're planning to visit the show here, I would say do the morning sessions because afternoon thunderstorms in Singapore are pretty typical. Even though the show was canceled, I did get to get a cool selfie with an owl. Nice to meet you. So, the problem with being at the Singapore Zoo when it starts to rain is that everybody wants to leave at the same time and with no good public transportation options, the lines for the bus were exceptionally long, the taxi rank was super long lines, and of course nobody's coming to the zoo because it's raining and Grab had no cars available, uh, so what did I do? I took the expensive taxi. There are white and black taxis in Singapore that uh, either don't have to use the meter or have higher meter rates. They were hanging out. I said, hey, um, are you available? And they're like, where are you going? And I said, uh, JW Marriott South Beach. And they're like, $50. I'm like, okay, that works for me. Otherwise, I'd, I'd probably still be at the zoo. And I wanted to come back to shoot a time lapse of the sunset. And I would have been really sad if I didn't get to do that. Uh, and then also eat dinner at the lounge here at the JW Marriott. Now, I'm not one to often eat hotel lounge food for dinner, especially in a place as delicious as Singapore because the food out there in the city is amazing. But the food in this lounge is amazing as well. I had some amazing uh, noodle soup. I had some amazing Malaysian fish cakes, some amazing desserts, uh, and even Singaporean beer. Hey, you know what they say, when in Rome. Now, before I go to bed for the night, I do want to introduce you to Lele. Yes, one of the Made in Singapore pandas did make it back to the hotel with me, 32 Singaporean dollars. And I was disappointed to find out that the stuffed animal itself is not made in Singapore. He is made in China, um, but it's a stuffed animal of the panda that was born in Singapore. So there we go. There's quite big eyes on that panda. Lele, you're going to help me for the JW Marriott Hotel Review later because I didn't bring one of the typical Yellow Productions crew because I knew I would bring back a Singaporean panda addition to the crew. So you're going to be Topher for this trip, all right? OC Girl's not here to voice Topher, but we'll just put in a, all right? People sometimes think that's my girly voice and no, 
the voice of Topher is OC Girl. Good Monday morning in Singapore. What is one to do on a rainy day in Singapore? With this behind me, you would think I'm going into Universe Studios. I'm not, <laughs> but I really like this scene here. I've come to Sentosa Island where Universe Studios is to check out Resorts World. Uh, Resorts World in Las Vegas is one of my favorite new casinos in Vegas. And I haven't got a chance to check out the Resorts World casino here or really even like explore this part of Sentosa Island. I've been to Sentosa Island a number of times. You can watch my previous video on it where I like took the cable car, did some of the hikes, did the zip line. There's so much fun to be had here, but uh, I guess today I'm checking out the developed area. Chris, why are you going to Universal Studios Singapore? I have a lot of requests to do a video on this place. Um, and cause I live in Los Angeles, home to Universal Studios Hollywood, like the original one, that's why. Going around Resorts World, apparently they've got some like bunny verse thing going on. So I don't know. I just I needed to take a selfie with this guy for for some reason. He was calling out to me. Okay, this is the escalator down into the casino. One of the um, trippiest, most illuminated escalators I've been to on this trip yet. This place is really quite grand and cavernous with nobody in the casino. Maybe because I'm here early and everybody comes here at night. It's, it's new, so, uh, yeah, me and the, the safety code. And that answers that question. Apparently this is for my eyes only. So now that I'm out of the camera free zone, what was that casino like? Well, it was small. It was a lot smaller than the Las Vegas Resorts World Casino. Red, a lot of red inside, a lot of table games. I saw a lot of people playing roulette. A lot of slot machines too. The slot machines though, they're kind of the lame ones. They're not like the really cool ones in Vegas. They feel like the ones that you would find at a Native American casino in the USA. There's clearly a lot of regulations about what they can actually play in there. There's a buffet that was like $20 for lunch and I had lunch in the cafe um, where I got some dim sum items for 18 bucks. What's kind of nice is they got free um, Malaysian milk tea inside out of these vending machines, free uh, fountain soda as well. So I like that. And by the way, the exclusion limit, uh, that's what they call it. For Singaporean residents, they need to pay $150 a day just to get in. You know, like they don't get that back or $3,000 for an annual pass. And apparently like gambling must be such a problem here. The government is so concerned about it that like the ads or screens they have inside to be like, don't leave your child at home. I mean, it's pretty serious that they don't really want the locals to gamble. And so to get in, you have to show your passport plus the like e-visit certificate that Singapore Immigration sends you once you come into the country. And then you have to show your passport to leave as well. Now it was really unbusy in there, probably because everybody's at Universal Studios Singapore right now. But I, you know, when I was looking at the hours of the theme park, it's open, like they close at 6 p.m. And I think that's so that uh, people can come to the casino afterwards because that seems like a really early closing time. But my favorite attraction on Sentosa Island, it's not the casino, it's not Universal Studios, it's the Skyline Luge. To get to this, you take the train to the Imbia station, and then you can either take the cable car or you can walk up to Imbia Lookout. This is like the top of the hill on Sentosa Island and this luge. They're like these little cars that you can take and ride them down the hill. Even if it's raining, they'll give you like a poncho to wear. It's super fun. And then you take basically like a ski lift to come back up. Pro tip, do two rides because you'll learn a little bit on your first time and you'll definitely want to go down again. You know, a neat thing about walking around and hiking, I mentioned is the wildlife here are some wild peacocks on Sentosa Island. And also, uh, this used to be a military base. And so a lot of the military buildings they've repurposed for other things. This former military hospital is now a Madame Tussauds. I think that's the coolest wax museum building I've ever seen. And if you don't want to spend your money to go in, they've always got like one wax figure you can take a picture of uh, right out front. Now, one thing I really love in Singapore are these treetop walks, and there's quite a few of them up here on Sentosa. There's other ones around Singapore, but like they build them high above the floor of the forest, and uh, it's really it's really peaceful up here um, in the rain. You know, the rain coming down on the leaves, and uh, sure, you could certainly uh, bring an umbrella or a rain poncho. But how do they keep it safe? Uh, it's a city surveillance state, and so they've got CCTV cameras everywhere even on the hiking trails. All right, so after my hike and visiting Madame Tussauds, I was just about done with Sentosa Island, but I wanted to visit the beach before I go because I'm a beach boy. I love beaches and nobody's here, um, I think, because it's a rainy day and a weekday. I think this is a weekend destination. There is a lifeguard right here in this little hut 
and I'm pretty sure I'm being watched right now too. So hi there, whoever's watching those cameras. What's also interesting about uh, this beach that makes it, like it feels really like serene and peaceful, right? Uh, and then you look out this way and like all the cargo ships and uh, cranes really just kind of ruin the view back there. Woo, looks like there's somebody doing jet skis. That looks like fun. So to leave Sentosa Island, I contemplated taking the cable car. It's like $33. I've done it before, so I just took the train back. It comes in here to Vivo City, turn left out of the train station, and is my one of my favorite food courts in Singapore, the Food Republic in the Vivo City Mall. It's like three o'clock, so it's not time for dinner yet, but uh, I can get a little afternoon pick-me-up. This is a mango shave ice from a shave ice stall in the back, um, cold refreshing it's got fresh mango and it's got mango ice cream on it it doesn't get any better than that and because it's a food court instead of a hogger center it's air conditioned which is nice so after finishing up my mango shave ice exploring vivo city i came here to another shopping mall but this just isn't any shopping mall as you can see by those trains back there those are the airport trains at changi airport this is the jewel the center shopping mall of Changi Airport. And no, I'm not flying out today. The vlog is not over. I came here just to come around the shopping mall. As many people in Singapore do, the shopping mall is that amazing. It's got the world's largest indoor waterfall. It's got like a bridge over there that you can cross to see it from up high. Uh, it's got 280 restaurants and shops. And the whole thing is amazing in a word. I mean, like, it just makes me happy to know that a place like this exists, like that somebody could conceive and build this thing, and it's truly things like this that make the attractions in Singapore like one of a kind. No other, no other airport in the world has the world's largest indoor waterfall. And those trains that go by, they've like, they're the ones that connect the other terminals. They, they've timed them to like slow down so that as you come by, like you can look out and be like, oh, look at the waterfall, it's really neat, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty neat, I think so. Well, boy, after conquering all seven stories of the jewel, five above ground and two below ground, I've worked up an appetite down basement level two. At the Food Republic, I stopped in to find, like I walked around to figure out what most people were eating and uh, from the Indonesian place, it seemed like a lot of people were having this. How's this work? Uh, you get your choice of one or two meats and then four veggies and some rice. And so we got the beef rendang, we've got some chicken and their choice of veggies from the stall. Uh, and to drink, I got a oolong tea, um, which this is a very classic uh, Singaporean style of giving you a tea where they give it to you in a bag with some handles. Uh, but let's go ahead and dive in. They put a little bit of sauce on the rice and let's dive into this beef right here. Mmm, 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 tender, juicy, and um, and spicy too. When they asked me if I wanted spicy sauce and I said yes, they're like, oh, you can eat spicy. Boy, every time a white guy eats the spicy food around here, I just impress the locals, let me tell you. Oh, and these green forks, uh, that means this food is halal food. And uh, so when I return it, there are different tray returns for regular food and halal food. And so I'll need to find the halal tray table to uh, tray return to put this in. Well, after dinner, I stuck around the jewel until it got dark to see the nighttime show on that waterfall. It was Disney themed, so I had like Disney characters on it, Disney music. Pretty neat to have the whole atrium darken and projections on that waterfall. And as fantastical as when I saw the Bellagio about for the first time. But before I go back to the hotel, I stopped at Cow Cow Ice, an ice cream shop from Tokyo, Japan. Milk ice cream. But Joe Player folk and Rich. And this is the Cow Cow Ice Cream Sunday. There's a cheesecake on it. It's a good cheesecake too. Not cheap. $9.80. And hey, fellow explorers, there's a lot more to go of our Singapore adventure. If you haven't checked it out yet, definitely check out part one of this series where I visit four hawker centers in 24 hours have some of singapore's tastiest foods and then as soon as part three is out you'll find the link on the screen or in the description where i'm going to visit some of singapore's most iconic neighborhoods little arabia little india and the really awesome gardens by the bay all right as usual i won't say goodbye because i'll see you in one of those videos